Good day, ladies and gentle cars. Once again, welcome back. I'm your host, Dalvin from Sing Racing Channel. And this time, well, uh, I, I promise this should be another 20 minutes video, a guide on how to master the wet conditions in F123, how to prepare for wet races, uh, for unpredictable, changeable conditions in F123, be it your league race or just, you know, a random race you're going for, whatever especially in league races, right, where you are unprepared, sometimes even in career mode. So this is the practice routine that I've been using for quite a long time. You know, uh, some variations of this do exist as well. And you can pause it on the screen right now to see, you know, what I'm setting up for practice one, practice two, and practice three in the Grand Prix modes to see, you know, how exactly I'm going over this. And, you know, that's basically the stages I want to practice throughout these sessions, like in uh, practice one, I want to go from dry to inters to wets and then practice two i'm going the opposite way you know it's from full wets to inters and then to dries and then in practice three i'm just you know trying to just finish up uh, the slots then try to do something new that i haven't done before so maybe just inters to dries and whatnot and that's basically the practice routine as uh, the summary of it the tldr you know just use that uh, use your two hours or one hour that you have in practice uh, get a feel of the conditions and that's it thank you for watching see you next time <laughs> just kidding right so that's pretty much uh, the basics the intro that you need to know about how i practice and get used to the wet conditions here and also just a disclaimer this is not a track guide or anything the reason why i'm showcasing japan over here is because uh recently i've been race engineering a couple of guys so, and we prepared for the japanese league race and this is what I did before, you know, we came up with all the strategies and whatnot to, to look for, you know, when is the good transition time to intermediates, when is the transition time to wets, and that came in helpful because we had a changeable uh, condition in the race, right? It went from uh, intermediates and it went to dry. So we took intermediates for the first 12 laps and then 15 laps on mediums till the end. And that was it pretty much, you know, but it all came down to the practice that you did to make sure that you are doing the right thing, you're making the right decision at the right time, switching onto the right tires at the right time. And if you don't have like, you know, external telemetry tools to help you out, this is your best way to get used to the conditions. Get into the setup, uh, setup screen, well, get into the lobby uh, in your Grand Prix mode, uh, set whatever AI you want. Now get in with your dry setup. I usually just take my dry setup like I did you just saw recently and I just add on two clicks of ring front and rear to give it a little bit more you know survivability in mixed conditions right so I just increase my downforce by two clicks and then now I'm going out out on track on the cold tires here of course and you can see it's quite overcast so it's going to take a little longer for the tires to warm up as well uh, which is a good challenge for ourselves to get used to right I'm sliding around of course this is my uh, first hour, first minute on track after a day break, right? And it's always going to take a while before your muscle memory kicks in after a minute or two. So running on the grass, running on the curb, that's all fine. You should be making these mistakes, you know. Uh, if you're doing, then you know you have something to work on on the day. And for the first few minutes, you're just going to be running out on track and just wait for the dry conditions to pass through and uh, wait for the weather report like we're going to ask here right of course dries are the best ice right now because well it's just started <laughs> you know the session just started it's not going to rain any uh, anytime soon and that's pretty much what you want to be doing just go out on track run around practice on your you know, um, medium tires, hard tires, whichever you want on full fuel load, half fuel load, whichever you, do, you want, it doesn't matter, right? You just want to get a feel of the conditions, how to drive a different weather from here on out. So I'm just going to drive around for about five, six laps, I think, before I cut on to the start of the intermediate period. And you want to be listening to the weather report as well every now and then from the race engineer because that's going to give you quite a big hint on what the weather change is going to be like and just a disclaimer again this is only going to work if you're on perfect forecast accuracy right if it's an approximate then it's going to be a little bit more touch and go you may not know exactly what the engineer is saying uh, but 
you still have the reference out on track the lap time difference the grip difference you feel that's going to be same regardless of the weather accuracy they're on so now let's give a give ourselves some break from this uh, longish intro and run a few laps and then we will cut back on to the start of the transition period in this session And exactly three laps later, we are here in lap number four. You can see some drizzles on the screen, which means it started to rain. And immediately the effect is so much more noticeable in just two corners. I passed about three, four tenths ish. And immediately I'm heading into the settings and making a mid session save. That's one of the most important things, uh, most crucial things that you can do in the game. Make a mid session save in your Grand Prix mode and then ask your engineer as well what's the weather report looking like and engineer still says yeah light rain is here for 20 minutes or so whatever the time frame is and dries are still faster right you've made the mid-session safe now just drive around one more lap and feel the conditions now you can see like i'll just let you see as as we are going through the sector one itself uh, how much more cautious you have to be on the throttle I'm trying to push here, you know, I'm trying to push as hard as I could like the normal dry lap but there's just no grip on the tires. It feels like cold tires like out of the pits and you go almost running into the gravel there at the exit of Dunlop. Very easy to crash over there as well. Deck the one, sliding a little bit, a power slide there. Deck the two as well and now we come into the hairpin. You can see we've already lost two seconds on our delta at this point alone. And this is the time where you know you'll be thinking is this the right time to be pitting or do i extend another lap right and here's where I'll, I'll tell you how to help yourself to make a decision here you can already see on the track it's getting greasier by the moment you're losing more and more lap time the car is almost uncontrollable here right and i've already lost four seconds on the delta and this is the point i'm saying like okay uh, I'll make another mid-session save because I know this is the last lap that I can pit. I could have pitted last lap, you know, if this is a race scenario, I could have pitted in the previous lap, get an undercut on everyone else on uh, warm intermediates, or I can use this lap as the last lap to pit. If I stay out one more lap, I'm just inviting trouble here, right? And immediately I'm heading into the pits, drive into the pits as well so that you get to practice the pit entry in these tricky conditions and immediately once you're into the pits that's uh, you know time for you to swap into the intermediate tires and go out on track once again so here we are back into the pits and now i'm just going to go through the screen and i'm just flicking through it nothing really important i'll cut back to the important part right after this all right now that we have done a little bit of flicking through whatnot just checking the tire deltas what's getting quicker what's slower right now and obviously you can see the intermediate tires are three seconds quicker right now and i'm just going to make a quick setup adjustment here like i always do for the intermediate conditions like you saw i just increase my front wing by two clicks so that's another tip that i always recommend to anyone if you are transitioning from the dry conditions to the wet conditions uh, try to intimidate quite specifically add on two clicks of downforce on the front wing right plus two on the front this is going to help you massively in the entire lap time not only just to you know gain lap time that's the obvious thing that you want to be doing uh, but it also helps you to hit the corners a little bit more easily uh, at some of the high speed corners like you have here in suzuka even in slow speed corners uh, you'll be able to hit the corners much easily reasoning well it's quite simple right you're going slower you're generating less downforce in the car and you're going to be needing some assistance in some way right so that's how you gain a little bit more rotation you gain a little bit more lap time in the wets by increasing your front wing so golden tip here you probably won't find it anywhere else whenever it is transitioning from intermediates well not intermediates whenever it's transitioning from the dries to the intermediates you want to be increasing your front wing by two clicks maybe one maybe two sometimes even three 
but you have to increase it otherwise you're gonna be under steering like a cow everywhere else on the track similarly when you go from intermediates to wet conditions i always recommend increasing it by one more click because it gets even worse to drive in the full wet conditions the tires are already not the grippiest thing on earth but it's gonna help you with that extra front wing over there once you've done that you know go out on track once again this is the gist of the whole practice right you want to be getting an idea of how the setup is helping you now you can see with the extra front wing i'm somehow still able to take 130r almost flat maybe just a little downshift sometimes just a little lift and now i'm just testing out the racing lines here you want to be using the same racing lines that you do in the dry in the wet as well right uh, that's because you know the game works in such a way that it doesn't uh, have any dedicated wet lines it's the same amount of grip on the racing line as it is in the dry and in the wets so you wanna, if you have racing lines on just follow it almost 100 percent if you don't have racing lines on you have to, the racing lines turned off just use a normal racing lens as well wherever the grip is now in a lap from now you will notice that the track starts to have a little darker patch you know more like a dry racing line is starting to form there's a little bit less water on the track you know that's just visual but that's gonna help you to visualize the racing lines in the game as well so this is a very useful thing a useful tip for those who are driving without the racing lines like myself and anyone else out there just run on two or three laps eventually the racing line the drier wet line right uh, if that's the right word to put it the drier line in the wet will start to form and then you can see where to position your car so it's basically like a built-in cheat by the game you know uh, make use of it and you'll be able to nail your corners lap after lap and now here we are coming to the end of the lap uh, that's another thing you want to be doing is increasing your brake bias to 57 or 58 in the wet conditions and try out all these funny lines like i just did over the curb like in the dry it works but now in the intermediates uh, a little bit of wet uh, a little bit of wetness right on the track that means it's no go zone on the curb and there you go running wide again running onto the curb you have to try to push the limits you know see where you can break where is it too early where is it too late all the good stuff it, this is where you actually practice it you know and you don't want to be waiting until the actual race to do it and like i said exactly a lap ago now suddenly the track is you know there's like a darker patch that you can see that is forming the drier racing line in the wet that is forming that's going to be your grippiest line in the wet conditions follow that in the corners especially in the traction zones and the braking zones it's going to help you massively i missed the apex here and that means i'm going to run wide a little bit there lose a little bit of time maybe and i'll have to adjust my braking in the next lap maybe i'll go down to 56 maybe down to 57 and again the same thing ask feedback from your in-game race engineer ask jeff uh, well well we all miss jeff uh ask mark uh, how's the weather report right mark uh, mark will give us the weather condition weather report and he says yeah this lightning is going to stay with us for a while inters are the best tires go with it right and again observe on the top right what is the delta time the average lap times that you're doing so right now i notice from my dry lap time from the absolute dry lap time i'm doing about almost 10 seconds slower in the intermediate condition so i'm around the 140s 141s so this is what i expect it to be right so you get a rough range of lap time maybe the real race condition because there's more grip in the you know proper race scenario compared to the practice session maybe you're a bit quicker one second overall quicker right so maybe i'm doing a 29 7 in the race and then the intermediate time i'm expected to about 39 5 you know close to 40 those kind of things the rough range about nine seconds to ten second game should be the same and then keep going for two three four five laps or as long as the rain is out there if you want to practice as long as possible go for it it's good for you if you just want to get a feel of the conditions 
you know, at a certain point when it starts raining or when it starts transitioning, go for it as well. Do as you like. You will have to form your own practice habits here and make sure you are getting a feel of the conditions right out there. And one last tip during the intermediates as well, uh, during the rain in general, use your battery as much as you need to, right? It's going to regenerate so much battery because you're saving it a lot. Might as well just deploy it on the straights here like we have uh, the, the exit of spoon curve down to 130R and then the pit straight as well. It's such a long straight. You might as well just spam your battery. It's going to gain you about 3, 4 tenths of free lap time and you're going to regenerate the same amount of battery by the end of the lap. So make sure you use your battery as well in the rain. Otherwise, you're bleeding lap time every single lap and over a race distance, you're probably losing, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. It could be that. Now let's uh, cut on to the next transition phase which is going to be from the intermediates to the wets right now this is where it starts to get a little bit more sketchy for me to drive right um not sure if this is in practice two or in practice one but we'll jump to the wet conditions which is going to be coming right towards the end of this practice session okay and well there's only about five minutes left in the session so it's quite a big skip over here right uh, the intermediates lasted for quite a long time here and it's starting to get to a point where you just might have seen it briefly right the delta between the inters and wets is coming down so the wets are getting faster as the seconds go by and i'm going back out on track same setup you know not much changes just a little less fuel that's just to test out the initial feeling and well mm, the usual process right go out see how it feels and you'll definitely notice like you know the hearts uh, well not the hearts the this uh, this blue wall full wet tires are going to be a little harder to drive compared to the intermediate just less grip for the fall right you have to be a little more gentle on the throttle on the brakes compared to the intermediates which you know it's already a step more gentler than driving the dries right so your driving is also going to evolve uh, from uh, second to second or maybe lap to lap and and yes the message from jeff as well uh message from mark as well uh i can't stop about jeff I'm, so i'm not doing this intentionally but yeah the message from Mark says that you know not sure whether the dry uh, whether the inters or the full wets are the fastest right between these two tires and that's usually a good indication that it's time to transition now there's a good exception to that as well you know if the rain is going to get lighter immediately in like five minutes you might as well stay out on the inters earlier right but you saw the weather forecast it's going to get heavier throughout the session so you know go for the wet tires so like Previously from dry to inters, uh, you have a little bit more leeway here when you go from inters to wets, right? So if you go a lap or two earlier for the wet tires, usually you can still gain some lap time just because, you know, fresher tires, uh, fresher wets at that time, right, will be a little bit quicker than the old intermediate. So you can still gain a bit of lap time during the two laps of uh, you know what do you want to call it undercut or you know out lab or whatever you want to call it right but yeah again that's the same process we are low on time here of course in the in the first practice session time's going to tick down and uh, i'll bring you next to the start of practice session two or maybe somewhere in between of practice session two actually uh, we are starting off with wet weather as well and then we will find out when is the right time that we want to move on to the intermediate tires so let's skip to that okay and well a big big fast forward later we are back into the pits in practice session two with 24 minutes to go so we've spent about 30 minutes on track back into the pits and we just made a small adjustment to the setup which is the tire pressures because uh, i noticed during that practice session at the start of practice two with heavy fuel uh, the pressures yeah were fine but 
yeah, the tires were starting to overheat as the track got drier and drier, right? It got towards more towards intermediate condition. The full wets started to overheat a little bit. So I'm just anticipating that. I'm adjusting the setup and lowering the pressures a little bit. And this might also help me to give a little bit more overall pace in the wet conditions in the rain, right? And now back out onto the track in the intimate conditions. You can already see the AI, are, you know, AI doing their AI stuff, you know, back on the inters already. And you want to be doing the same thing, right? Like I mentioned in the previous one as well. Go out on track, um, you know, try these funny lines, you know, if that curb works or not. If it works in inters, maybe it works in the dry, you know, for sure. If it works in the wets, maybe it will definitely work in the inters as well. All those things, right, you've got to test it out. And then again, you will notice that when you transition from the wets to the inters, your inputs might be a little too cautious, right? What I mean by that is, in the wets, because you have less grip, so you'll be braking a little bit earlier, braking a little bit more smoothly, going on the throttle a little smoother as well, like coming out of this hairpin, but suddenly I notice while on the intermediates, I'm able to break a little bit later as well and get on the power much earlier without inducing any wheel spin, right? Same amount of input, no wheel spin. Here as well, on the first part of spoon, I didn't really use the full exit cup on the right. Here I used too much uh, throttle on the exit and a little bit of wheel spin there on the exit. So, you know, it's not fully dry, right? right? Of course. So you're gonna have to be careful where you can push where you cannot push but one thing's for sure you can push a lot more than the wet conditions so take the time to practice and get used to the conditions bring the tires up to temperature as well remember the full wet tires they operate from 70 to 80 degrees celsius whereas the intermediates are 80 to 90 degrees celsius so a lap or two will get them into the optimal window and let's just go on board here with one lap of intermediate tires right the fresh intermediate tires against the delta 10 that i set on the uh, wet tires much early on in the session so you can see this you know through the air section alone it's almost a second and a half gain here and this is going to happen in your real race as well if you make the undercut at the right time the transition to the intermediate tires at the right time you can gain easily three to four seconds on your outlap versus the old wet tires. So that is a good thing that you should take note of, you know, whenever you're going into races. And this is why having this kind of practices, one, it helps you to get better in the wet conditions. Two, it helps you to know when is the right time to transition between these conditions. Again, here I took too much inside curve. Maybe you know breaking too early and then on the exit still a little bit slippery so i know there's a little bit more improvement to be made on my throttle but we're still up you know despite the mistakes here and there they're still up three seconds and now into 130r it's a smaller lift this time around right and then into the braking zone i cooked it up too much and yeah still begin on the exit the grip is there so that's pretty much the power of the fresh tires and the undercut at the right time almost four seconds gain there and you can see you know if you do a two lap undercut or someone stays out two lap too long on the wet tires they're going to be losing about seven to eight seconds compared to the others out on track keep that in mind and this will definitely help you to gain some lap time in the race and everything else like i always say keep going till the end and now this session is half full wets half intermediate so there's nothing left in practice session two let's move on to practice session three where we start off with intermediate conditions and it quickly becomes a dry condition and again i think that's also a crucial turning point in your races as well how you can you know master those conditions and make the right decision in those changing conditions so let's go to that And once again, we cut on back into FP3 as you can see on the top left, right? We are in FP3 right now. It started off with intermediate conditions. So, well, what else you have to do? Take the inters, go out, and start pumping in lap times. 
Once again, we get the same message, you know. Um, rain has stopped, but we're not sure which is the faster tire, the inters or the dries, right? So, and you can also see on the track as it is, it stopped raining. The track is getting faster and I make a mid-session safe around here so that you know, if I need to come back to this point and make a different decision to test out my theories, right? Uh, I can always come back and do that. Now, first of all, um, you already noticed that lap times are dropping quite significantly on this lap alone. Not just because its tires are getting uh, quicker or anything, it's because the track is drying up so it's naturally going to get a bit quicker, right? And here, I intend to go to the pits, but you know, skill issues as always. And um, again, like I say, practice your pit entries in any condition as well. Whether it's drying up or it's getting wetter by the minute. And now I'm going into the pits to, you know, switch on to the dry tire. So let's skip on to that real quick and skip all this useless animation. All right, and we are finally back into the pits real quick uh, after the intermediates run. Uh, just quickly flicking through, uh, you know, the usual, uh, the tires, and uh, you just want to check what is the delta, right? Like I box at this lap. Uh, ideally, by now you in a real race condition, you're already out on track. But you can see, you know, at the point where you box, you can see the delta time between the softs and the intermediates. This day and night difference, right? The softs are already 1.2 seconds quicker. The fresh softs are massively quick around here. But you can also see that, you know, the longer you wait, the more time you're going to lose. And we'll just go through one lap here. It's just going to be the out lap alone. And you can see the track is slowly starting to dry up. And, you know, I, I don't have to explain too much about it as this clip will play in the background as we are entering the outro already. Uh, you can also see, um, you know, while the track is drying up, you have to take it easy on your first lap or so while the tires are cold on a greasy track like this, right? Otherwise, you know, you're inviting a lot of spinalas here. But that, that aside, we have pretty much reached the end of this guide right now and we're entering that TLDR section, right? So hello to, the, uh, to whoever uh, skipped from the start to come to the TLDR section. And in this TLDR section, we're gonna just pretty much summarize for everyone as well, right? What we've been talking for the past 25, 30 minutes or so. So basically, we have the Grand Prix mode. We have three practice sessions in Grand Prix mode and how you can utilize them to practice um, multiple possible scenarios that can happen in a, in a league race or even in a normal race, right? So it's more applicable for a league race as well. Or in general, if you just want to improve in your wet weather driving uh, and changeable conditions to be more adaptable, right? Uh, that's one very important skill for a lot of good drivers out there, the top drivers as well. So you learn this, you are going to be pretty much going to be quicker than probably half your peers if they don't, you know, don't like the wet conditions. So you have to be good at it as well. You can't say no to a wet weather race, right? Now. What I've done in this session is, in practice one, I've set it up to be dry to inters to wets. Uh, only five minutes of wets apparently at the end because that's how the game sometimes does funny things. And then in practice two, I've, I've done uh, half full wets at the start and then half full inters at the end, right? So half wet, half inters. And then in practice three, as we are now, it started off with intermediates at the start about 10 minutes and then in transition into dry condition right now so we are on the dry tires as you can see in the background uh, just running on laps and already in sector one we are three seconds up so that is massive you know that is your first time lap right we haven't uh, counted the outlet itself so which is probably you can even just half the deficit we are gaining about eight nine seconds maybe on this uh on this uh fast lap but even on an out lap on cold tires, you'll be gaining about 2-3 seconds at least. Even if it's 1 second, advantage is an advantage, right? You have warm tires by the end of your out lap undercut versus someone coming out of the pit lane on cold tires. So you'll be easily able to follow them and you know, make an overtake if you need to on the spot. That's it. 
right? And uh, all these different conditions, you want to know when is the right time to fit to change the tire compound. If it's dry to inters to wets, you know, when is the right time to box by just by looking at the delta time on your screen and by feeling the track conditions and listening to your race engineer mark in the game right finally i'm mentioning right uh listening to mark in the game if he says oh we're not sure which tire is the right one or so 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 and so yeah that's usually a good sign you have to transition to the next compound already similarly when you are coming down in the rain level right from wet to inters to dries it's the same thing if he says oh we're not sure which is quicker wet or inters yeah, probably time to uh, jump onto the inters and so on and so forth. And you can see in the background as well. Second push lap, we are getting more confident with the track as well. The lap times are really starting to come down as well. Tires are warmed up, and you know they're starting to be a little too aggressive on the inputs. You know, and uh, you, you are mounting curves left, right, and center. That's good, right? You know there's more grip coming on on the track already so you can start to break a little bit later you can start to you know pick up the throttle much earlier and more aggressively all that good stuff while that is going on i also like to leave you a little tip on how to adjust your setup real quickly for the wet conditions here so let's just take the example i have for my setup i have 36 twin 34 26 a wing that I'm using for Suzuka if it's fully dry all right it's a low downforce setup that I consider to be low downforce right now if I want it to be capable of you know surviving the wet uh, the intimate conditions I'll go up two clicks on the downforce overall so 36 and 28 on the rear easy easy if I want it uh, drivable for the wet conditions I'll go up even two more wings at least so that's going to be 38 30 on the wings okay now you have adjusted your dry setup to a wet ready setup what do you do actually in a session right let's say it goes from dry to enters you add on two more front wing through your MFD during the pit stop phase so effectively you're gonna have like let's say 40 30 wings for example for example and if it's going from inters to wets you add on one more wing so you'll have 41 30 wings okay and do the same thing for the opposite thing the opposite um, you know uh, conditions so if it's starting off at wet you start off at 41 30 for example and when it goes to intermediates you can go down to 40 30 and then when it's already drying up you can go down to 38 30 once again that is going to help you to maintain your car's aero balance, allows your car to rotate enough and not um, you know, lock up the front or the rear in any of these conditions. 58 brake bias or 57 brake bias, that's one more thing that you can keep in mind. It's a little weird, right? Uh, usually you'll dial down the brake bias a little bit more rearwards in, uh, in most sims, right, when it's wet. But apparently in F1 it doesn't work that way. So something's wrong with the physics for sure. Code masters as usual, right? So you have to play with what's dealt to you. And in this game, 56 in some tracks, but usually 57 or 58 brake bias is the sweet spot to use in the wet and intermediate conditions. Whereas in the dry, just use whatever brake bias that you're using. And that's all. Uh, watch out your tire temperatures as well, your tire pressures. You may need to lower it in some tracks. You may need to increase it for some tracks uh, depending on the weather. So it's a big variable over there as well. Uh, testing it out beforehand definitely helps you to find out the suitable tire pressure for any condition. And with that done, well, once again, uh, thank you for watching till the end. And uh, I wish you good luck in your practice sessions. If you love to join my Discord server, my Discord community, we'll be welcoming you, you know, uh, you know with the warm hands, with uh, wide arms, or whatever they call it, right? Uh, people love the setup that I've established over there, and uh, we also have uh, setups that are being shared by members in this channel, and sharing their tips as well, sharing race strategies, sharing their clips, you know, good clips, bad clips, and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, come along, join us, 
uh, on our road to our first 1k subscribers and then let's aim for the 5k uh, for this year and well i guess that's a good cue to end this video a good little spin back to the garage we go and we'll call it day thank you so much everyone for watching till then we'll meet again in the next track guide uh, or you know whatever setup tip or whatever you want to call it uh stay tuned we will be back with some more tips for you to enjoy bye bye